Hey everyone, finished watching the next episode of Jungle Fury, No Eye and Leader. Not expecting a good episode with a title like this. RJ is giving a lot of attention to Lily's training for some reason. This doesn't come back. Grizaka uses his Zocado power to bring two new Shadow Guards to life. I still don't know what Zocado power is or what it does. So far, all it's been shown doing is things that other characters could just do on their own anyway. It makes monsters grow. Big deal, they do that on their own. It brings statues to life, assuming that's what the old Shadow Guards were. Carnosaur did that. The new Shadow Guards attack and the Rangers leap into action. RJ joins with his new Purple Ranger powers. The Rangers are overwhelmed and Casey doesn't know what to do for some reason. RJ jumps in and comes up with a strategy himself. It appears to work. Casey feels like RJ belittled him. Later, the Rangers train with RJ. They fire their cannon and get thrown back. RJ says it's because one of their animal spirits wasn't up to strength. KC storms off. Later at Jungle Karma, KC explains his feelings to RJ. An alarm sounds, RJ tells KC to stay. KC indignantly responds, There you go again calling all the shots. Elsewhere, Daishi says to himself, If Grizaka won't teach him how to harness Zakato power, he'll teach himself. I thought that was what he was already doing. Why did he have to announce it? Right after, he summons a group of Rinchi and says, Maybe he could master Zakato power if his life was in danger. Okay, there's motivation and goal, pretty clearly laid out for the audience. Why did we need the previous statement? Theo and Lily go out to battle the Shadow Guards. RJ and Casey remain at Jungle Karma. RJ points to a basketball hoop. He proposes a hypothetical. He needs to make a shot or die she wins. Casey sees he's pretty far away. No way he can reach the hoop. RJ throws the ball, and KC watches. He runs up and pushes the ball along to the hoop, making the shot. RJ tells KC that's what leaders do. He has the right instincts. KC and RJ go to join the others. They defeat the bad guys, but Grizaka revives them with Zakato power. Elsewhere, Daishi defeats the Rinshi, but can't harness the Zakato power. Master Mao appears and warns Jared to leave his evil path. Daishi insists that Jared can't hear him. Mao responds that Jirid's humanity and lion spirit are a nexus more powerful than Dai Shi. The Rangers, meanwhile, use both of their Megazords to defeat the Shadow Guards. At Dai Shi's temple, Camille walks into a long forgotten room and sees Dai Shi looking for a map. A map to the Rhino Nexus, he tells her. At Jungle Karma, Fran brings out a new pizza topping, anchovies. Casey, Lily, and Theo try, but don't like them, but RJ likes them fine. No one likes them at first, but they'll grow on you. This episode's mostly acceptable. Zocado power remains undefined. Is it something I should care about? Casey's plot is... fine. Something feels really off about him, though. Why would he have an issue with RJ taking charge? His explanation later clears things up a little, but it still feels wrong for him. I do like the lesson RJ shares with Casey with the basketball hoop. It's probably one of his clearest lessons so far. Master Mao makes an appearance trying to reach Jared. That's pretty cool, despite Jared being partially responsible for his death or whatever. Mao does still care about him as a student. His wording is a bit weird. Jared's humanity and lion's spirit form a nexus? I had to look up the word Nexus, it's not a commonly used word. I've only ever heard of it used before in the Star Trek movie Generations, and there the Nexus was a traveling wave that contained an opening to another dimension of sorts. One definition of Nexus is connection, another is a specific point, a place. The way Mao uses it fits the first definition. Daishi looking for a map to a Nexus, though, implies the second definition. Daishi plans on finding the Rhino Nexus. Will we meet a Rhino Pai Shua Master? What's their name going to be? So far, the Masters have had referential names. Fant, Lope, Gwyn, and Rilla's names are all latter parts of their animal spirits' names. Finn and Swoop are a bit more abstract. Finn's referencing a body part of a shark, and Swoop's being something a bat can do. Finally, there's this moment that I've been kind of dreading. The anchovies. Ha ha, no one likes them except RJ. Isn't that funny? Isn't he vegetarian? There was a whole subplot of a previous episode where he went and disrupted a fishing event so no fish would be caught. What does he think anchovies are? How does he think they got them? This is just another instance of inconsistent characterization this season. The new shadow guards here don't talk, they just make grunting noises. Fans have speculated on who their VAs were, but no one knows for sure. It's possible their noises were recycled from past monster recordings. This is the second episode to be credited to a scab writer. 
Maybe that explains the out-of-character moments, but when I think back to what's come before, the normal writers couldn't even keep the characters straight, so maybe these new writers just have a talent for quality consistency. Still not great, barely even good. I'm more than halfway in, and Jungle Fury is easily the most disappointing season of Power Rangers so far, even more than Dino Thunder. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah. I'm not going to fish. I'm going to disturb the fish so the fishermen don't catch the fish. And proud to report, not a fish was caught.